soup.com. Ronaldo Mouchoua, you started all this up. You're the managing partner. It's gone from strength to strength, hasn't it? 2000, did you say this was actually launched? And well, we, I mean, we initially wanted to start an auction platform for the region, and we thought about, you know, starting something around the year 2000. But at that time, I think it was a bit early, and the internet penetration in the region was just not as uh, as strong as it is today. So we uh, made it actually a section in our mother's company, which is Maktoub.com, which is the most uh, viewed site in the in the Arab world. And we just uh, called it like the auctions of Maktou, kind of like a section on a portal. But I think it didn't do well because the region at that time uh, was not yet ready. Then we learned and last year we rebranded under soup.com and we launched it as a separate platform. We picked Dubai and the UAE because it had the highest uh, internet penetration. We focused on the market and we started it and now one year later you know the site is pretty popular and uh, we're one of the highest visited sites I think locally. You just won an award, what was that? What yeah was we won the UAE web award for e-commerce so Soup was picked as one of the best sites for so its design and functionality. Yeah I mean uh, this year has been really an uphill and very successful year for us. Uh, Ronaldo really for those happy. people who are watching now, um, Soup.com in essence what is it? Okay, um, and how do you use it? Basically it's a platform that allows individuals, businesses, small businesses to basically sell and buy products on the internet. It utilizes the internet for its strength where it matches people and here we're matching people to basically find the items they want and buy the items that they like. Um, it allows people from home, uh, people who don't have full-time jobs, people who have full-time jobs to actually utilize the internet in a very interactive way. Um, the internet is a very strong marketing tool and um, with its growth in the region now we have a lot more users and I think it's time for people to use and that's why soup comes in and just fills the gap if you have a product you make something if you have some collection if you have a mobile that you just got a new one you want to replace or if you have a new one you want to sell or a gift it could be something that you could basically list on the site uh, Souk uh, as a platform has so many visitors so somebody bound to find your item by searching something for, for it and then uh, from there on they start bidding the people the person who actually pays the most uh, ends up uh, purchasing the item the seller is happy because he got the most for his money the buyer is happy because he compared and found the right deal for him so I think and it's very interactive so it's actually fun we were saying today it. perfect opportunity here obviously Christmas Day some people will get some unwanted gifts yes. Um, is this the perfect platform for them to kind well, of discreetly I mean, <laughs> put them on and hope the relatives aren't viewing? Don't want to the person who gave me the gift, I would be very careful choosing my ID. I think, I mean, if you get a gift and you can't replace it or you don't know where it was purchased from, probably Souk is probably a very good place to list it. List it, take a good picture of it, you know, put a good description, kind of research on name. the site to see, uh, yeah, maybe you should hide the name. The user ID gives you quite a bit of anonymity while you do it. Even though we as Souk know the users, know the sellers and the buyers and we verify them, on the site you could have a, an ID that basically can stay anonymous. Last week on this program we were out and about in Dubai asking pe what people wanted for Christmas. Yeah. There was one gentleman who said his wife was going to buy him a boat yeah. at about 150,000 dirhams. He thought it was quite a reasonable price. Have you ever sold anything like that? Yeah, I mean, actually one of our solest, uh, sold items, highest sold item is a boat. Uh, I think uh, with the, all the marinas that are being built around Dubai, I think the boating industry has flourished. And of course, there's always second-hand and new boats, and people who are expert can evaluate it. And the site is a good way to list it because if you compare it to the traditional ways of newspapers, where you just have few lines, it's not really adequate for people to see, and it might not be worth the viewing. Well, online, you could have four or five pictures, take it, put all the data you want. People actually, what I think powerful is people ask you questions as a seller and you can immediately via email and SMS basically get notified and reply. So it's a very interactive way and basically you ra narrow down the people who are interested in your product and then who are people who are very serious just bid on the product. So I think it's very interactive and different. I think it's fascinating. I know a lot of people get hooked to certainly eBay where I'm from and I mean you see all sorts. You see from houses to peacock feathers and you wonder why some of these people are posting them. What are some of the more unusual things that you've seen on, on the site? I think in, in the UAE we have a trend for people like listing plates, car plates and mobile numbers that are unique numbers. I think this is something we have not seen other in other regions where people I think value these things. But um, I'm proud to see a lot of handcraft, collectible, coins, stamps, uh, some awards, you know, all kinds of different things that you could see Have there been the any real surprises for you? 
Um, we had a um, couple of people who sold used clothing and the people who got them were really complaining. It's like, these guys should wash them before <laughs> they send them washed. So I think the guy didn't go to the expense. So we told them, okay, so just so you're satisfied, Super will refund you the washing expense so and then we dealt with it. The and they were happy then, were they? I don't know if they were happy. <laughs> I think it should say, please wash your... Yeah. Uh, unwashed clothes uh, Unwashed clothes yeah. another, no, We learned from then, we told them, unwashed clothes are not allowed. From a seller's point of view, if I wanted to sell an old, whatever it was from my home, I'm having a bit of a clear out. Is there any cost involved for me as a seller? As a seller, if the transaction is successful, uh, Souk basically takes a 5% commission from the item if it's below 100,000 and 2% if it's above. But with that, you get the delivery of the item. So we actually deliver our own products to our buyers and you get a whole e-commerce platform where basically you can accept credit cards on behalf of buyers and Souk securely processes these. So with the merchant, service that you're getting, the delivery, I think at 5% is very reasonable. Amount. Strategically, it sounds incredibly complicated. I mean, how many people do you need to sort of have all these transactions and obviously delivering the goods? Yeah, from a logistics point of view, yeah. I mean, I think this is what's very different, uh, Souk, how, what differentiates Souk from eBay, is basically we're very local, we're involved in the delivery, we're involved in the payment, and we manage an escrow service, so when the buyer receives the good and he rates the, the seller, that's when the money is released to the to the seller so we're more involved yes in the transaction we felt that for this part of the re, uh, part of the world people were still getting familiar with the internet and there were a lot of questions basically about how successful could e-commerce be we wanted to provide the full service to make sure that the transaction closes it does put a little bit of burden on our people and my staff and I think our, our customer care division does an incredible how, how job. How big is the team? We have in Dubai around 13 people and then we have a technical center of about 8 people that manages the development, the technology, the service and that's not actually in the UAE. And I guess this is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, isn't it? I mean, looking at the rates so the predictions for internet growth here, it is becoming more and yeah, more Yeah, I think popular. the last number I read, Dubai and the UAE were around 50% internet penetration. And I think this is such a young environment, the average age in this part of the world is just really lower than anywhere else. So we feel like the, uh, the people who are young, they're more, you know, um, able to experiment and get online. They're much more familiar and comfortable with the internet. So it actually plays well to the demographics. We just need more people to come on the internet. And this is happening. I think the rates are coming down. There's more now internet providers. The UAE is getting another operator. So I mean, the whole environment You're a happy man changing. then, really, aren't you? Yeah, I was going to ask. Yes. I mean, I think internet rates, uh, the lower they are, the better. We've seen a huge jump from when it is a lot introduces the broadband, they reduce their rate. I mean, we saw immediately uh, a jump on the usage and the site. I think to chat and to send emails, you can do it with dial-up, but really to become a seller and do e-commerce, you need to be more engaged with your customers and clearly if the internet is the way to be engaged with them, clearly you need more like a broadband connection. We feel really the success of CO2 correlates with the uh, spread of broadband and there are not just in the UAE, even other markets now we're looking into expanding and you see that broadband is becoming very popular and as the rates go down you know and become more aggressively priced uh, it's more people will come on the internet and the whole proposition becomes just a much better proposition to the both the buyers and the seller and everybody else. Just something very group. quickly I'm interested in is there anything you talk about different things which are being sold is there anything that wouldn't work is there anything that you couldn't sell do you think? I mean we have a strict guidelines of what you can and you cannot sell I mean everything that's allowed allowed in the UAE basically is allowed on soup. We have taken on one more step, for example, animals. Even though there is nothing to say animals are not legally traded early, we just said, you know, we felt our users actually on the site, every time there was a listing of a pet, of a, of a bird, for example, people would you complain and we just took the feedback and said, look, even though, you know, you can do it, we will not, even though it's legal, and quite, you know, people trade pets or whatever, we didn't want to do it. I think there was some feeling that the, they, people wanted to make sure that the animals had a good home, so the whole online model seemed to be a little bit in conflicting with that. So we As took the a position managing that, so. partner, Ronaldo of Soup.com, yeah. are you happy? I mean, I'm happy, excited. I think um, I don't want to yet jump into conclusion that Souk is successful. The internet is a, a very dynamic environment. You could be leading in, in one area and then something happens in another area and another site. It's a fickle so beast. It's a very difficult, I think, environment. So we're happy with the growth. We're happy that Souk mm -hmm. has actually empowered a lot of people. I have so many sellers on the site who are women, who are at home, who who have now found like something to do and they are really happy doing it and they are engaged and they are 
Uh, the, uh, one of our strongest like points on the community are these people who are constantly on the side. They help other sellers. They guide other people. They almost act like an extension of the super.